Hey Rat Bags, it's Jade. Obviously you might have heard about the day before being delayed. It was meant to have gone live this month, but it got pushed back only a few weeks before its release and then given a whole year delay, supposedly down to them migrating the engine from Unreal 4 to Unreal 5. If you don't know what the day before is, it's a mashup of The Division meets DayZ. There's been a whole bunch of question marks about this game. The fact that the gameplay looks pretty impressive and pretty good for such a small team, but also the fact that they haven't got the best of histories in terms of how they've developed previous games. So of course, more controversy has arrived in the last few days. I was going to speak about this, but I wanted to see if they'd give some sort of update, and they have. Effectively, they have put out some new details on their website and effectively asking for players and people to volunteer themselves to work on the game. So this tagline literally upset pretty much every journalist out there, but it's not that surprising to me, as we'll discover. They go on to list exactly what they feel a volunteer is and what it will do for the game. Bearing in mind that Fantastic are based out of Russia or a region or state, I do believe they have all moved pretty much over to Singapore since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And they've got the backing of a fairly decent sized mobile publisher. And this will be the first AAA game they've worked on on other platforms. But here it is, part-time volunteers. Anyone can be a part-time volunteer to contribute to the fantastic community and get cool rewards, participation certificates and free codes. Part-time volunteering at Fantastic includes various activities ranging from translating to community moderating. Part-time volunteers can also offer their unique skills to improve our projects or create new special features. So as I said, a whole bunch of outlets and news journalists on Twitter seem to have been pretty outraged by this. I think it's pretty standard. I've been in and out of over 100 discords over the years, covering all sorts of different games, and the vast majority of them do actually get a lot of help from the community, especially smaller games in terms of translations. And every single discord you go, you will have a bunch of moderators that are doing it for a love of a game or just because they like moderating. Time and time again, I see the same faces and people, particularly because I cover survival, turn up a lot as moderators in the same discords. They don't get paid, they normally just get some recompense, usually a free copy of the game, and maybe some exclusive loot or stuff along the way. And of course, they do usually get a chance to play test the game and try it out a bit earlier. But it does seem like a lot of this stuff they're talking about is a little bit more. It's not just a case of moderators. It is actually about developers working for them. And just another worrying sign about this game. Apparently they've got over 100 full-time internal volunteers, so that's employees. And then they've got about 40 external US and worldwide volunteers, supporters who help with testing and reviewing our products at a very early stage. In addition to tests, external volunteers supporters also localise products into different languages. So yeah, I can see why some people would be maybe worried about this. If you're doing a substantial amount of work for a games company, and that games company isn't some little indie studio, then yeah, there should be a case to argue that they should be paying. But let's get it pretty clear, playtesting is often not paid work. It's normally done in the form of alphas or betas, and that's just something that you can get for free. I've never heard of anyone being paid to actually playtest the game. Likewise, as I said, translations isn't that much of a big deal to me. Again, if you're Ubisoft or someone like that, yeah, I expect you to go out there and do your own work in translating stuff. So I guess a company though with 100 full-time employees, employed and produced by a big publishing company, or a relatively big one anyway, it does seem like they are maybe taking the piss a little bit out of certain things. But comparatively, compared to other companies their size, some of this stuff just doesn't seem that out of the ordinary. What they do go on to say is that they did use a localization for Prop Knight, that's the other game they're working on, and apparently it wasn't great. In fact, they had to go and get more volunteers, supporters to help them. They also go on to list that supporters, bugs and cheaters have all been dealt with by supporters within their Discord community. I'm not someone that really wants to go and dog on reporters. I actually quite like a lot of articles that I read. For sure, some of these more traditional online media outlets, they do have some opinion pieces in there that can really rile people up. But that's no different from some mouthy YouTube doing a hate bait video. But yeah, it does seem like they've overreacted quite a bit. Maybe they should delve deeper into the world of indies and see how much of the stuff is actually done by people that just want to help the game to completion. But when you start racking up all the problems that the day before is starting to have, it doesn't paint a very good picture of a game that's supposedly coming out next year. It's going to be a big ambitious MMO, 
And yeah, the feeling is that it's mostly just vapeware somehow. I don't want to believe that. I love the idea of this. I've always loved survival and I figure an actual decent one looking game, something based along the same lines as The Division could be amazing. I've done a bunch of videos promoting it, but I have also delved into their history as well. Fantastic, of course, were responsible for The Wild 8, but of course they famously actually sold off the game rights and no longer developed it way before it was completed. The publisher Hype Train Digital ended up taking over and they spent a good amount of time getting more developers on board to eventually port it over to consoles. There was a bunch of problems and issues apparently between the developer and their publisher at the time and so effectively the rights to the game just basically got given over to Hype Train Digital. In terms of other games they've made, of course Prop Knight is not exactly that amazing but it's still sitting at a nearly positive score. 68% of users have found it positive. That's not terrible. Yes, it's a pretty much a kind of clone of Prop Hunt, but it's obviously found some sort of footing given how many people have bought it. 9,000 reviews means it's probably sold over 150,000 copies at least. The only other game they've actually ever released was the Radiant one, which was some tiny little windy that no one bought. Apparently it was okay, and they did have another early access title, effectively where you would go and shoot zombies in a tower block, but that never really saw the light of day much. Or if it did come out, it actually got canned pretty quickly. I think it's been removed from Steam since. Ultimately, different parts of the world are going to do different things. While we in the West may think volunteering for something is pretty much taking advantage of people, there is still just a whole bunch of different discords and game communities that utilise people to help them. But maybe in Asia and Eurasia, like Russia and stuff as well, it's just more of a normal occurrence. Literally everything some of these media outlets and news journalists have been listing is all the stuff that, yeah, I kind of expect a lot of people to do if they really want to play the game. No one's forcing them, of course. I'm still more concerned with the fact that they decided to delay the release of the game only a few weeks before its full release, or early access release anyway, and supposedly going to take a year. Now, I've spoke to a bunch of developers before, and I've mentioned this in a few videos, and some are having a few weeks or a few months of trouble getting their games that are just about to launch into early access to Switch. But most of them are saying to me that it shouldn't really possibly take that long. If they are switching engines, the idea that it's going to be available for consoles at the same time or very soon after, which is something they've been talking about, that could be potentially not true either. We've had nothing but really on rails game demos. There's been no live showings, not much screenshots, not much progress being listed by them at all. And at first I did put that down to them maybe moving out of Russia to the Philippines or Singapore, wherever it was. But it could be just down to the fact the game is absolutely ages away. So let me know what you think. Should volunteers be paid more for doing stuff like localization? Do you expect that from a studio with 100 employees? Where's the limit? If I'll get any more news about this, I'll keep you guys informed. But yeah, worrying issues for the most wishlisted Steam game of next year.